So why did you choose to go nonlinear? Because, I mean, we're just going back and forth at all times during the chapters themselves, and especially since you put the um, family tree at the beginning, so we see everyone's birth and death dates, and then many times through the book you refer to someone's ultimate demise Mm -hmm. long before it actually happens. Why did you want to take that sense of drama out of it? I consider the novel not a what happened book. It's a how and why it happened book. And so that's why I wasn't afraid to give spoilers with these flash forwards. I got the idea originally for the fluid timeline from Edward P. Jones's amazing novel, The Known World. And in that book, he utilizes flash forwards and he jumps around in time. And if you think about it, chronology in any novel, whether it's linear or nonlinear, is artifice. Uh, in a linear novel, authors often elide time by jumping ahead days, weeks, or months between chapter breaks, or they dilate time by expanding a tiny moment into a 20-page chapter. So by making the novel nonlinear, I try to lean in to the artifice of chronology in order to, I hope, make it more artful. And moreover, if you think about what the defining characteristics of the South and Southern literature are, the primary one, in my opinion, is the past persistent intrusion into the present. Our past, our fraught history with the Civil War, with slavery, with racism, is constantly bubbling up into the present. And so by making the book nonlinear, I tried to make that uh, a bit of a metaphorical element of it. And again, I also wanted to write the novel because there's so many generations of the family, I wanted to give the reader the sense of the that they're all living at the same time, even though they pass away throughout the novel.